If you watched my last review, I reviewed the Encore Elixir, which was a golf ball from the direct-to-consumer market that had a really good price point and, for the most part, pretty darn good performance. Well, I'm pretty excited because another ball that Encore sent me was their Vero X1, which they promise is even better. They promise it's faster, they promise it's longer, and they promise it spins a heck of a lot more, which has got me pretty excited. It cost how much? So where the Encore Elixir was a three-piece golf ball designed kind of at beginners to intermediate players, the Vero actually goes to the opposite side of that and is a four-piece designed more for your advanced player, guys who can bend the ball from right to left and aren't going to lose a box of them every single time they go out. Which it's a good thing they hope that you don't lose these golf balls because frankly they are a little bit more on the expensive side. From all the direct-to-consumer golf balls I've tested, they usually are around that $30 to $35 range, but these actually come in at $39.99 and it actually gets a little bit worse because these don't include free shipping. So now all of a sudden, I actually went ahead and typed in my shipping just to see what it would cost, and you're looking at about a $7 flat rate, which is gonna put you at that $47 mark, which is actually gonna to compare to a couple of brands, including the Titleist Pro V1, the Titleist AVX, the entire Bridgestone lineup, the entire Callaway Chrome and Chrome Soft X, TaylorMade TP5 and TP5X, all the Wilson staff models. That's right, all of them, every single golf ball. Every single golf ball that's made is pretty much in this price point, which kind of begs an interesting question before we even get started. What about this golf ball is gonna make it to where you don't choose a TP5 for $2 less, or heck, even a Bridgestone for $2 less? That's the ball Tiger Woods and Bryson DeChambeau plays. Why wouldn't I play that ball for $2 less from some company I've never heard of? It's a valid question, and these numbers are going to have to really, really, really impress me. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to justify that price. All right, guys, so in my Elixir review, I actually go more in-depth and talk about um, the Encore website and as far as what the options are and what Encore believes in, a little bit more detail. Uh, for now, I'm just on the Vero. I'm just going to focus on what they say specifically about the Vero. As you can see, the $39.99 price tag there, it only comes in the white uh, currently. Um, just the, the cast urethane, four piece. And then if you scroll down here, they do offer some pretty insightful things about, you know, the firmness and who it's designed for, things like that. And then actually, if you do read the descriptions in finer detail, you'll start to see something out of the science influence that they have. I mentioned it in the Elixir video, but a lot of it just seems like jargon where they're talking about the inner core and talking about how, you know, it's going to compress. And it's going to mean, it's going to be a lot of stuff that most people aren't going to understand. Um, and it might not be relevant to you on the course. So I kind of ignore all that. But if you look at the basics, you can see some pretty insightful things there. When it comes to design, the Vero looks a lot like the Elixir, except instead of having the color on the front, you can see it's more of a black and white monochromatic design. And the Vero on the side does have kind of a neat logo, but I will admit that the alignment tool isn't as bright and vivid as the Elixir had. Uh, it's still okay for lining up your putts, but it's definitely not what it was with the Elixir for sure. Alright guys, so let's talk about around the green for a second. First of all, I have to say the ball feels amazing. They really nailed the feel with this one, and it feels slightly firmer than the Encore Elixir, but it keeps its softness with that 84 compression rating. Honestly, I'm not really sure how they do it. I haven't seen a golf ball been able to pull off this type of firmness while still maintaining a nice, soft inner core. And it doesn't just feel like that on the putting and chipping, either. The driver, the wedges, the long irons, everything feels really good. Honestly, it's probably the best thing about the golf ball. And where the Elixir struggled to kind of check up around the greens... The Vero doesn't struggle that much at all. It checks up a lot easier, and it seems like it has a much more fluid motion when coming to a rest on the green than the Elixir did. The Elixir kind of felt like it sprung off the club, especially on the putter as well, but that's no longer the case here. All right, guys, so for the driver there, you can see uh, the numbers there, and most of those are pretty on pace for what I usually get, but I will say that the spin RPM at 2585 is pretty low. I don't usually get that low with a driver, so I was very impressed with that, and it did get me that extra three yards that you see there from the Elixir, so uh, very impressed with that. Otherwise, the numbers are just okay. Nothing really blew me away, especially for the price point. So honestly, with the price difference between the two golf balls, I really expected this one to outshine or even give me a huge boost in distance, but unfortunately it didn't. I only got three yards distance and frankly I lost two mile an hour of ball speed, which really means that the only reason I got that extra distance was because of the uh, 300 RPM spin I actually lost, which is actually impressive. 2500 is pretty impressive for a driver's spin, so I will give this ball credit for that, but unfortunately the numbers are too close to the Elixir and I can't justify the price point for the driver. 
All right, and now we have the seven iron numbers. As you can see, that RPM is a little high for me. That's that's high out of my comfort zone. Uh, ball speed, pretty average compared to what I usually get. So the Vero promises you more spin, and it definitely does, even if it's in the area you might not want it to. So the seven iron numbers, as far as ball speed, were pretty on par with anything else I hit, whether it be a two-piece, three-piece, four-piece. Um, I usually get about that 109, 110 range for ball speed, and this falls right in. However, 6,500 RPM for a spin on a seven iron for me is really high. And like I've, I've said in my videos, if you have ever seen a review from me before, I prefer it around the 5,300 to 55, 57 in that range. Unfortunately, 6,500 is a little too high, and frankly, I don't want my 7-iron coming back at me. Um, the other problem is, is if you hit a draw or fade, I notice that the ball does like to bounce and shoot that direction, which, if you know how to use it, can be a great tool, but I think for most average golfers, it's going to be something that's more of a nuisance than something they actually intend to do. All right, and I'm, uh, I'm looking at the pitching wedge numbers here, and the ball speed is nothing to write home about. A lot of spin, though. There's been a lot of spin from this golf ball, which is great. I will say this golf ball isn't that forgiving. If you hit it in the center, you get the nice big boost of ball speed, but if you miss off of the uh, toe or off of the heel a little bit, it does punish you quite a bit, even more than the uh, elixir did. So uh, not a very forgiving ball. Definitely someone who's more advanced needs to be using this type of ball. Uh, beginners will probably struggle to get a consistent reading from it. So the pitching wedge numbers are a little bit better. The spin's almost 9,000 RPM, which is one of the best balls I've ever tested for spin. So on course claim that they spin a ton is definitely holding up. However, the ball speed wasn't anything to write home about. It's about average for what I usually get. All right, and those sand wedge numbers are better than the Elixir by about 1,100 RPMs, which is nice. That's going to be more in the average range. You'll get it to stop from a 50-yard pitch, which is really nice. Get it to check up real good, especially around the greens as well. So I'm glad to see that number go up. Now, if you saw my Elixir review, you'll note that the one thing I wish the ball had done a little bit better on was the 50-yard pitch. It just didn't stop. It honestly kept rolling afterward, and it just didn't check up around the greens like I wanted it to. However, the Vero 1X doesn't have that problem. 7,500 RPMs around on the 50-yard pitch will get you stopping power, and it'll even stop on a dime, which is really nice. So what Encore says about the ball spinning is really true. I saw increased spin numbers in pretty much across the board. And when it comes down to the durability test, the uh, the Vero here tests just like the Elixir did. Honestly, they're both fantastic. The Vero, uh, after putting it through the gauntlet, and to be completely honest with you, I played more holes with it and uh, hit more shots through the gauntlet phase uh, than I did the Elixir. And frankly, it actually survived and held up really well. As you can see there, there's some scuffs that you can see that are visible. But honestly, it is looking really good. You could probably get a couple rounds out of it. Really five-star durability here. So in conclusion, guys, Encore is kind of in an interesting spot here. They have a ball that could potentially go up against Snell or, heck, even some Tour balls, but unfortunately, as of right now, it's just not worth the price. I think the Elixir is a better buy, and frankly, I think they still have a little ways to go before they can really truly compete and be the best in the market. Honestly, guys, though, it's a pretty darn good ball, and if you're someone who's looking for a direct-to-consumer golf ball, but you're more in the advanced tier, you ought to give it a try, especially if you're needing more spin. It definitely spins like Encore says it does. Unfortunately, with the price point it is, and no more performance than you get, it might just end up lost among the others. Guys, always thank you so much for watching my channel. I appreciate you being here. I'm Nick Moody from Golf Ball Attic.